Okay, so yes, this time we're going to be talking about what? Two subjects, like we did earlier on. First time is to start on car insurance. Yes, you've, you, you've listened to um, why you need an insurance. But the question is, how do you get the best insurance? So I want to give you my tips again. So first, in order for you to get the, get the best tips for insurance, what I suggest you do is maximize your no claims bonus. A full no claims bonus of five years or more could cut the cost of your car insurance by as much as 75%. So, yep, think ahead before you make a claim. A few hundred pounds, say, that will knock years off your bonus, that's for sure. The cost of paying these yourself may be smaller than the increase in your premium from a smaller no claim discount particularly over several years. So, maximize your no claims bonus. Second, for your car insurance. How to save on your car insurance. Never automatically accept your insurance renewal offer. Yes, never. Believe me, I've done it. You may have done it, but don't do it. I tell myself regularly. Why? Shop around as thoroughly as possible before asking your insurer to beat or at least match cheaper deals elsewhere. And there are price comparison sites such as moneysupermarket.com, uh, comparethemarket.com and confused.com are the best place to begin your research. However, no single site covers the entire market and each one has negotiated its own deals with certain insurers. Therefore, it's worth visiting several to increase your chance of identifying the best quote. Go on. Therefore, never automatically accept your insurer's renewal offer. Third, manage your policy to secure the best deal. Now, accepting a large access uh, should reduce your premium. Given that it may not be worth making small claims for fear of jeopardizing your no claims bonus, however, accepting uh, an access of 500 rather than 250, for example, could work out well. So find out. But you must be able to, able and willing to pay the access if you need to make a larger claim. So yes, manage your policy to secure the best deal. Fourth, Make the right additions to your vehicle. All modifications, i.e. changes, that are made to your vehicle must be declared to your insurer and conditions, such as the wheel, alloy wheel, and spoilers, will often lead you paying higher premiums, so avoid them. So in other words, make your right decisions, uh, additions to your vehicle. So always notify your insurance company everything, otherwise they'll say, hello, What's going on here? We didn't know about this. Therefore, insurance doesn't cover it. You don't want to find yourself in that situation, so therefore, declare. Yep, there we are. We have talked about our insurance, car insurance, and it's a big one for East End anyway. But let's move to something slightly more as serious as all other topics that we've talked about. This time, I'm afraid, it is uh, an embarrassing one for many. Um, it is about scams. It's about fraud. It's about thieves. It's about liars. It's about cheaters. It's about everyone who's just ready to grab your money, you know. But of course, money grabbers, thieves, liars, and cheats, they are becoming sophisticated. They want your money. If you're an old lady, listen to me. Listen to me. They want your money. If you are... An old cha-cha and chachi and dada and daddy. Be careful. They want your money. So, how can you secure your money from cheats and liars? And in modern days, we call them scammers. Yep, it's scammers. There are zillions of types of scammers. I will go through with some. And I will go through how you can protect yourself against those lying, cheating, disgusting scammers. What else can I call them? They're liars. They're fraudsters. Yeah, 
there's still your money. So let's start with the first one. Well, actually, there's plenty. Let's try with all the lists and then I'll go through it one by one. What, and believe me, the names of those scams are not as uh, simple as you think it is. First is phishing. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Second is vishing. B-I-S-H-I-N-G. Third one, investment scams. Fourth one, pension scams. Fifth one, advance fee fraud. And many more to follow. But let's start with first, phishing scams. The question is, what is it? And that is quite a common one, I'm afraid. Very common indeed. It's where an email scam, where it appears to get a message from a legitimate source, such as, let's say, a bank, or even Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, or even PayPal, if you like to, you know, transfer money by using PayPal or Apple, or Amazon. So in other words, some things that are legitimate. You get an email from them. It looks real. You think the email is also real, but really it's not. The But the message will encourage you to click a link. Do you remember an email? A link that looks like familiar? An email that looks familiar? It says, click and log into your account. And normally, telling you, yep, yep, telling you, um, your account has been locked. Yes, locked. You can't get in. And there is a large transfer of money. See? They want money. In reality, though, the link in the email goes to a fake website that collects your information. There we are. Because once you've clicked on the link, you put your password, you put your username, they, and you put your details, they pretty much know who you are. Just because you clicked on the link and it looks, the link looks serious and you have done it. And there we go. They've got your details. Yeah. So, but there are other, other ways of phishing. Don't get phishing. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. You know, my English isn't that great, but I'm letting you know. Phishing. And of course, another version of this scam involves email attachment. So where, when you get an email, it says, can you please open the attachment? And you find there's a form or something. And, and, of course, that allows the scammer to gain access to your computer. And that computer has a virus because it has access to your computer and therefore gain access to your data. So, that, and so the question is, how do you spot it? Obviously, we know phishing is phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. But how do you find out? There are two ways, by the way. Look at how you're addressed in the email. So basically, check the way they write to you. Uh, scammers will usually um, they uh, write saying dear, "dear sir" or "dear madam" or "dear customer," and normal, formal, legitimate emails will never do that. Okay, so scammers they would say "dear sir" without putting your name, but normal professional emails won't do that. So. Also, second, you might find that the email address the message has sent to from. Look at that as well. Open the email and expand the pane at the top of the message. Look at the email it was sent from. If it's real, you'll have a recognizable um, details. Scammers will not actually be able to spend messages from a real domain anyway. So check the email address if it's real. The email address might give it away whether it's real or not. So usually, by then, you're able to find out. So first is the way they write the email. Second is look at the email address itself. And it might be, there are lots of mistakes faking it, basically. And the question is, when you do find a, a, such email, phishing email, what do you do? Um, you can click, if you never clicked, obviously, the a suspicious email, um, because there could be a problem. Yep. So, yeah, never do it. But, of course... If you want to find out more phishing, you can always contact um, for Action Fraud. They'll give you more. And, of course, delete it and ignore it. That's one. So that's phishing. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. That's phishing. Let's move to another one. And don't get confused. The second one is vishing. V-I-S-H-I-N-G. This is where scammers phone you, basically. So there's a difference between um, phishing 
email, and we're talking about now phone. So a phone call where a scammers pretend that he or she is from a bank, building society, or even a government agency. And, the, and whilst the forcer is on the phone, the forcer will try to review, uh, try to get hold of your data. So that's what it is. So, so that's what they do. So the question is, how do you spot it? You spot it, um, and it's not very easy, I'm afraid. Um, the big, big tip would be is to, um, is to, is, is, to, is not to reveal the information, and also a legitimate caller will never actually ask you for your personal details. So that's what it is. So what do you do? Um, just basically hang up the phone. That's all you do. Make sure the caller, once you've identified something suspicious, never ever uh, um, um, respond or give your personal information. Just hang up the phone. And if you're, if you're not sure, um, hang up the phone and call your bank and billing society on the number uh, uh, on your debit or credit card. So if you want to find out whether it's right or not, hang up the phone and phone your your actual um, com a company, actual bank, but never ever uh, um, give your phone details away. So by doing that, you can be sure that you're, not, you're going to the right people and if there's a problem, they can tell you about it, okay? So that's basically vishing, not fishing, but vishing. But let's move on to uh, another one. It's probably um, an investment scam. That's a quite a risky one. That's quite a serious one, actually. Um, so what do you do? Um, when you have a, well, first thing, we need to find out what is it. It's a generally phone-based. Uh, you might be contacted in any other ways, um, such as email or people coming around to your front door. Although investment scams vary, but this principle has remained the same. They they, you are encouraged to hand over money to invest in a company. That's only if you have money, basically. Company opera we, doesn't really exist. That's what you call investment scam. Giving away, don't forget, it's all about giving away money or stealing money from you, but for the purpose of investment, but really there is no investment at all. But the, can, this can be quite difficult, actually, to spot. Uh, many companies uh, are calling from or trying to get you to invest. It, they can actually look quite legitimate. So it's quite a tough one. So if you really want to find out whether they are real, you are going to have to do a professional search online. And Financial Conduct Authority has a website which allows you to check whether you're entitled to, um, whether you can check whether they're registered as a regulated company. That's quite a complicated one, but we leave that aside. It's just that don't hand over money just because you think so. But for some people, I suppose, you may want to think about pension scams. That's quite a big one. Uh, of course, since 2015, in, the, in Britain, pension has been um, deregulated. What that means is that you can take money out of your pension pot before the age of pension age. That's really, if you're 50 plus, uh, 50 years old and plus, and uh, you think uh, um, and you, you, are, you think you want to get some money out of a pension pot, you can do that. But of course, um, some people do it for good reasons, and you need to seek advice before you do that, obviously. But of course, others are scammers here to make money out of you, basically. So, so the question is, how do you deal with that? Well, I mean, pension scams will usually follow a similar path to investment scams, or the same thing. They could be done on the phone, or it could be done in other ways. But uh, the warning signs are exactly the same. You usually start with a phone call saying, do you, do you want to get money released from your pension? And you say yes. They will harass you for um, you to... Um, get money out of your pension but of course um, the consequences can be very serious where you're giving away your life savings that you you've worked so hard for so many years some people may have worked for like decades 20 years 30 years and you suddenly realize that you've got your pension part but now the companies that have 
helped you or so called helped you basically scammed you out of your pension pot and you left with nothing. So I've come across cases um, because I myself give advice on debt and money and stuff. A couple of individuals actually have been scammed £40,000. Now, once the money goes, you, there is no way getting back because the fraudster has done a runner. So really, you need to think about that. So, yep, so never ever respond. But if you think you're not quite sure whether the company is legitimate, you can check um, Financial Conduct Authority's website to see whether the company exists. Or if you're not sure, if you're going to report, you can always contact Action Fraud. 0300-123-2040. Again, it's the government site. Helps people who have been a victim of fraud or if they can help with your uh, f- um, your problems, you better act fast. So there we are. There's another one, of course. Let's move on. You've got f- advanced fee fraud. So they're the one who basically, uh, again, scammers, email scam. Uh, they're probably the most well-known one. You get an email from ex-ministers or the royal family, often from a country in Africa, even Asia these days. They ask you to use your bank account to deposit a large sums of money so they can get out of the country and offer you offer to pay you a fee. Now, you'll be asked about your bank details, uh, but of course, there is no money. And the scammers will use the details you send to clear out your bank account. You call it advanced fee fraud. The question is, how do you spot it? One of these times, um, well, one of these times when you have to remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. So ask yourself, is it a fantastic deal? If it is a fantastic deal, it probably is too good to be true. So what can you do? Again, ignore the email. And never send email details or personal information. So never give your details to anyone else because it can only get bad. Now, final one. Let's talk about this and then we'll, we'll round it up because obviously there is a lot for you to take in. I'm afraid the financial market, it is very complex. Not many people understand it. And I'm not sure if you are, but obviously there isn't much out there for you to learn either. So I'm trying my best to give you the information that you need. So yes, here's another one. Authorised push payment fraud. Fraudsters basically um, hack into your email account. This is where you call it hackers. If someone hacked into your account, they've got access to your email address. Yeah. They then pose a legitimate business asking for payment. Then they use your email address, send it to others, as a, and pretending their business, this usually happens when you're p- buying a house or build or doing a building work done or on your on your home or booking a holiday. So again, be wary. Um, and and how do you spot it? It's quite difficult actually with this one because it's, it usually it happens when you're not expecting it and you don't even know it. So, but obviously, again, just be wary. Check the emails that you've sent. And of course, if you suddenly find anything fishy, any money is going out of your bank account, you make sure you contact your creditor ASAP. Um, yeah, and also, you may find that when you're actually buying and selling a house, it's a big thing. So you need to be extra vigilant. Before you um, transfer any money, you make sure you see the, all the dots are correct, everything is correct. Otherwise, once the money is gone, that's it, I'm afraid your money is no longer there. So be careful. Um, I mean, there's quite a few others. I mean, how about this one? Safe account scams. Now, again, you'll be contacted. Most, basically, old scams is all about them contacting you, either email or phone. But this one, safe account scams, usually they'll phone you and asking you, claiming to be from your bank. And uh, by the way, banks never phone you. They will usually say to you, say your account has been compromised. What that means is someone may have touched your bank account or been fraudulent uh, in some way. And they will encourage you to transfer all of your money from your bank to a safe account. But clearly, alarm bell ought to be ringing the moment someone say, transfer your money to a, a safe bank account. Safe bank account basically means their bank account. So the risk is you will end up, no doubt, losing all the life saving you've got. But the question is, how do you spot it? It can be difficult at first. 
as these scammers play on your fears about people illegally accessing your fund. So in other words, they use your uh, anxiety, they use your stress, they use your ability uh, of not knowing, and they've got the confidence. They know the, what they're playing at. If you're living by yourself, it's a tough one. You need to be extra careful. But the easiest thing to remember is banks will never ask you to transfer money into a safe account. So banks will never ask you to not just simply transfer into a safe account or any account at all because they won't phone you. You usually phone them and they give you a specific phone number to contact. So what to do? If you've been contacted by safe account scams, if you've been contacted on the phone, just hang up basically. If you're worried about your account security, just call your bank directly and find out. And of course, victims of this kind of fraud should contact their, their bank account anyway. You must do, okay? You must, you must do. It's one, there's one more I think will help you. And then we'll summarize what you've done. I know we have covered a lot. You might think it's not relevant, but believe me, when you check your email, you see lots and lots of scamming emails you've received. Is loan fee fraud. Now, it's basically, if you're searching for loans online, you might be searching for loan online, you know. You might be contacted by fraudsters offering you a loan directly. So they themselves will phone you to say, okay, do you want to borrow money from us? Now, you'll be asked to pay upfront fee. So in other words, they will ask you to pay them for you to get a loan. Uh, but the money will never be sent to you. So in other words, they will um, take the money from you where you try to get a loan. But in return, I'm afraid, you'll be getting nothing at all. That you called loan free fraud, a fraud. And lastly, let's focus on farming. P H A R M I N G. Farming. Like a farm, but it's farm with a P. It's again, it's similar to the first one that we did. First one where email, you get to receive an email. But instead here, Instead of you getting an email directly, the, the scammers target the website you are visiting. So they check your website. You type in the correct website address, but you then get directed to a fake version where and inadvertently put in your login details and secure information. So therefore, they now have your details. And in the end, then, they themselves have access to your bank account. So when you find about farming, what can you do? Just be careful again where you're logging into your website and be on the lookout for suspicious website addresses. You should know, you know, whichever organization you're doing it, but make sure, kept carefully check the domain address. It's also important to keep your operating system and antivirus software up to date. So I think it's worth you spending a bit of money to make sure you are you have all the up-to-date um, um, software to protect you really so yes so we've covered a lot but let's be let's do one more for your own benefit now that's called dating fraud now I know there's so many people um, in Britain who are yearning for a loved one yeah, we were all, you know, yearning for loved ones, you know, it's young at heart and single at heart too, you know, and we're always thinking about being double, absolutely. But of course, there are those who are making money and cheating in order to make money out of you for your single heart. So some folks that will no doubt connect with you on a dating website using a fake profile and they'll be upfront about living overseas and will email you and getting to know you over time and becoming affectionate and romantic. Then once you've become involved, they will start asking you for money, for a sick relative or for a plane ticket to come and visit and will happily take your money but never appear. What do you do in that scenario? Simple really. You have to obviously contact Ford Action Group as soon as possible and let's see where things go. So yes, of course, we have covered a lot, no doubt, but there's one more, and that is um, job scams. Um, there are a variety of job scams, which range from promises of a new career, 
where you are asking to pay up front for training or materials being offered on non on jobs that don't even exist where you are then you ask to pay uh, to organize visas and accommodation so a job that doesn't exist you're asked to pay for travel and visa and accommodation and you might also get caught by a work at home scheme where you're told you'll make easy money and you might have to pay a fee up front to register these leads turn out to be worthless were of course worthless so what do you do in that scenario if the money is gone i'm afraid you have lost it so you need to be extra careful and then of course in britain if you've been a victim of scam online or or you can contact the police the police if the police thinks that you need to contact um a fraud action you can do that so that's kind of it i think for now so what did we cover so far listeners i know i've covered a lot and i'm not sure if you've been following me we have covered a great deal it's all about scammers really so scammers who are really are genuinely interested in making money out of you so in order to protect yourself you need to be extra careful extra cautious some people will do it on an email because they want the money and they pretend to anything possible some people will hack into your email to make sure they can go in to go in it and uh, use your identity to make money some people um will pretend they're some something else or someone else they sometimes they even pretend they're police sometimes they might even pretend you they they want to be your lover and sometimes they might even pretend that they are your bank or your other companies or even your future employers because money is to be made and they're desperate to make your money so yes it is about your money in the end and listeners that's what i we've been i've been talking about and i really hope you benefited from it and benefited from this show on your money matters show and we have talked a great deal now of course it's time for me to say farewell and of course if you want any forms of topics that of interest in the context of money feel free to tweet ripon as ray at on tweet of course you can get in touch on better the bangla to talk to me about the subject matter that you want me to cover i'm happy to do so on that note thank you for listening on your money matters show with ripon ray Thank you.